Hello and welcome to online worship at the Mayville and Campbellsport United Methodist Churches. My name is Steve Delano. We're glad that you've joined us on this Pentecost Sunday. Today we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus' followers on the day that the church began. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A violent wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ, who offers healing and hope to all people. Amen. Our opening hymn is, I Love to Tell the Story. This hymn was written by Catherine Hankey. Let's sing. Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 26 through 27, and chapter 16, verses 4 through 15. Hear these words. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. 
For if I do not get, go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. And judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Pentecost is a holy day for Christians as we recognize this day as the birthday of the church. This is the church that Jesus Christ established. Pentecost is the beginning for Methodists, Catholics, Baptists, non-denominational Christian churches, and many more. It is the birth of the church for Christians everywhere. But did you realize that Pentecost is also a holy time in Judaism? In the Old Testament, Pentecost is also known as the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest. This was one of three holy times each year when Jews would make their pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate God. The other celebrations were Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Passover was to commemorate the exodus from Egypt, and then 50 days after the first day of Passover came the Feast of Weeks. This was originally an agricultural festival to show gratitude to God for the first fruits of the harvest. Thus, the Jews celebrated Pentecost from the time they entered the land flowing with milk and honey, the land that God had promised them. However, sometime after the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in, AD, in 70 AD, the Jews moved Pentecost away from being an agricultural festival and transformed it into an observance of the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, what we know as the Ten Commandments. In the passage that we read from Acts, we heard of the, the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus' followers in the upper room. These followers were immediately able to speak to others in the languages that were needed so that all could hear their witness to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was working in and through them on this first day of the church, on Pentecost. The passage that I read from the Gospel of John takes place while Jesus is teaching his disciples in what is called the farewell discourse. He has taught them about love, that they must love others as he has loved them, he has taught them that they must abide in him so that they will bear good fruit. And now Jesus is teaching them about the Holy Spirit. In the text that we read, the Holy Spirit is called the advocate. The Greek word that the gospel writer John originally used was paraclete. And paraclete means I call alongside. The paraclete is the spirit of truth whom Jesus calls to accompany his followers as helper, counselor, advocate, and guide. Though sent by Jesus, the spirit goes out from the Father. Jesus promises to send the advocate as a replacement for his own presence among his disciples. 
Jesus knows that his disciples are confused and at times even speechless because of what he is telling them. However, he consoles them by assuring them that it is better this way because unless he leaves, the Holy Spirit will not come. Even though he himself is returning to the Father, the Advocate will be their constant companion, the living presence of the divine among and within them, comforting the community in Jesus' absence. The Holy Spirit will enable them to abide in Jesus' love. It's important for us to understand that this is not about religious dogma or theology. Jesus is sending the spirit of truth to help his followers live in the way of Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads Jesus' followers in the way of all truth. And these followers know that Jesus himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Those who know Jesus' character as revealed in his deeds and words will lead lives shaped by those words and deeds. In this passage, Jesus promises his followers three things from the Holy Spirit. First, the Spirit will witness to them, and the disciples themselves will be asked to do the same. Jesus tells them, you are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Without the love that the disciples have for and show to one another, and without the advocate as witness alongside them, the disciples cannot be the witnesses that Jesus wants them to be. Second, the Holy Spirit affirms and confirms the disciples' decision to follow Jesus in contrast to those that are unwilling to believe God's revelation in Jesus. The advocate will bring to light God's righteousness in that Jesus' death is not the end, but victory over death, fully realized in Jesus' ascension. And third, this, with the Spirit as guide, the Spirit will make it possible for the disciples to hear Jesus' future words. These words are declarations and fulfillment of his being the truth. Finally, the Holy Spirit in glorifying Jesus will confirm that in Jesus, the very presence of God is visible and experienced. Friends, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to his disciples to witness to them so that they could witness to others, to affirm their beliefs so that would, they would confidently bring the good news to others, and to guide them to see the presence of God through Jesus. Jesus promised that the Father would send us the Holy Spirit as helper, counselor, advocate, and guide. Jesus promised that while he was returning to heaven to be with the Father, that we would not be alone. We are not alone. God is with us every day in every way. On this day, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus' church, let us rejoice that the Holy Spirit is with us, and may the Holy Spirit renew us each day so that we might do as God intends. Amen. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Knock us off our seats, O Lord, with the wind of your Holy Spirit. Don't let us just sit back and rest as though nothing important was happening. Remind us that you have come to bless and prepare us for your service. Now is the time of proclamation and celebration. Now is the birth of your church, not as an exercise in futility, but as a dynamic group of people who know you and love you as you know and love each of us. Flame up our hearts. Make us so joyful that we find it difficult to sit back and watch. 
We want to be a part of your healing love and mercy. We want to be people who bear the word that your love for us is eternal, that Jesus Christ, our Savior, proclaimed and taught that love in all that he did and said, modeling for us a new way to live. Pick us up and propel us forward into your world. Help us to remember that you have given to us what we need to be your disciples. We just need to say a resounding yes to you, Lord. Thank you for all the wondrous blessed patience and blessings you're, you pour into our lives each and every day as we offer our lives back to you in joy and hope. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Please receive the benediction. Out of God's great love, God has created you. Out of God's great love, Jesus Christ has redeemed you. Out of God's great love, the Holy Spirit has lifted and inspired you to go in peace and service throughout God's world, proclaiming the good news of peace, love, hope, and joy to all. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.